Greetings and salutations. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The 111th Psalm says, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in his assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasured in them. His works is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. And just like those words, we welcome each and every one of you all knowing that God is in this place and we are excited about joining him. Oh, I tell you, we've come through a whole lot this year and it's a good thing that Time did not stop. Oh, time is filled with swift transition. Oh, not on earth unmoved can stand. Oh, but build your hopes on. Trust in him who will not leave you. Yeah. Oh, whatsoever years may bring. If the heavenly face forsaken, yes, yes, yes. still more closely to him cling. Why don't you just hold, hold to his hand? God's unchanging. God's unchanging hand. Oh, won't you just hold, hold to his hand? God's unchanging. God's unchanging hand. Oh, baby.
Family, I thank God today for the opportunity to return a tithe and an offering. I am grateful today to be a part of the tithing community of this fellowship and a tithing believer in the household of faith. The tithe to me simply means that at the first of the week, I return 10% of what God has given me back to God. I return that 10% to the storehouse of God, the place where God's gifts are in part returned, that they might bless the storehouse, they might bless the keepers of the store, and they might bless the community around us. The word storehouse is simply a metaphor for the house of God, the place from which God pours out blessing to the world around him. I'm grateful to be a part of a congregation that knows and values the importance of being good stewards of what is brought back to the storehouse. I'm thankful to contribute significantly to the storehouse myself and my family because we believe that all we have has come from God. And so I invite you today to return a tithe to God, to take this moment to think about these months and weeks gone by, that if like me, you stop and think about it and realize God has been awful good to you. That, oh yes, all of us have had some trying moments, some more than others. Yet, all of us have something we can return to God. That we can but return just a portion, that 10% to God. Oh, I promise you, God will continue to reveal and remind to you that God has never left you yet. God's not given you a cold shoulder. The Lord has continued to provide for your life and invites you to return some of your provision back to God's house. God bless you as we give. I invite you today to share in giving on givelify.com or the church's give page through a secure PayPal link to mail in your tithe or offering to the church office and or to contact a member of our finance committee who can come and personally retrieve your offering and or your tithe. We thank God for the faithfulness of all of you who have been a blessing to this ministry and our ability to bless this community around us. We thank God for you as you give. Good morning. Please join me in reading this morning's scripture, which comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to stand before you and to bring your word. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done and what you're doing uh, throughout the world. Father, we pray for those that are grieving at this point. Some have lost loved ones, some have lost uh, jobs, and, and you know, oh Lord. So Holy Spirit, I'm calling upon you to be with us, Lord. Uh, meet the needs of your people. I ask that you uh, pour down your spirit upon me, that I hide myself and speak the words that you have given unto me. And Lord, you know that the world is confused right now. Uh, church people are confused. Everybody's confused about the virus, whether to take the vaccine, whether to, to wear a mask, whether to social distance. Uh, you know, Lord. And Father, with the confusion, we need men, men of God and women of God and your people to stand and make a stand in this hour. So, Lord, I ask that you anoint this word, that you anoint your servant as I prepare to break the bread of life unto you people. Thank you, Father. Today, my, my topic is to speak to the powers and hold on and stand. The virus and the vaccine uh, has called great division throughout this nation. Families are divided. People are fighting at school boards. Uh, children are there. They don't care who's around. And you can see the anger and anxiety on their face. Uh, people are fighting at supermarkets, fighting on airplanes. So let me attempt to try to, to deal with this from a biblical perspective. I'm not going to fight or enter into a debate with you. But one thing for sure is that this thing has affected the whole world. We tend to focus upon our little piece of what's going on. But this is one thing that has brought the world together, that this virus is real. The scripture says in Isaiah 1, 18 through 31, it says, come now, let us reason together, said the, says the Lord. It doesn't seem like there's very lot a whole lot of reasoning going on these days. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Proverbs 4, 7. Therefore, get wisdom in all you getting, get understanding. Mark 12, 29 to 31, the most important one, answered Jesus, is the Lord is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no com commandment greater than these. God reminded me this week that he has people all over the world. Some we know and some we know not of. Throughout the United States, there is a divide. I have had some Christian people call me and talk to me and ask me what I thought of taking of the virus. Some say they're not going to take the vaccine because they have not heard from God. If they don't hear from God personally, they're not going to take it. The Bible tells us of many stories where God sent his prophets, men of God, women of God, and their job was to speak unto the kings, unto the leaders that were not doing right by the people of God. One such prophet was Samuel. Samuel went to Saul when Saul was not doing what God had called him to do. Samuel also went to David when David had uh, tricked one of his soldiers and had taken a Bathsheba for a wife. So throughout history, God has always sent his prophets to speak unto the people. And when he spoke against the politicians, it meant that they were not doing what was right by the people. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he spoke to truth to power, rebuking the disciples, speaking out against the Pharisees and the Sadducees, went into the temple and overturned tables because they were not doing what was right. 
Jeremiah 21 says, Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pastor. A good shepherd does several things well. He tends to his sheep. He feeds and he watches over them. He defends the sheep from danger. He leads the sheep to good pastures and water. But the word of God says, Woe to shepherds destroying and scattering the flock of my pastor. The leaders of my people are sure to be judged. They were supposed to watch over my people like shepherds over their sheep, but they are causing my people to be destroyed and scattered. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and hear their land. Why am I speaking about pastors and about prophets? It seems today that even the congregations are confused. You have some pastors that are standing for uh, the, va the vaccination. You have some that are against it. So people are confused and not knowing what to do. We have uh, some preachers that are aligning themselves with politicians. They're made to sing a political issue. But in the word of God, it says, if my people will humble themselves and pray. I'm just a simple man. I'm just a simple little country boy. But I believe in the word of God. And I believe that people all over the world has humbled themselves and have cried out to God. And we prayed for a cure for this, for this pandemic that has come across with COVID-19. And I believe that God has heard our cry. And he heard our cry and then a miracle happened is that he brought forth this in a, in, in a time that people say, well, it, it's too fast. It's too fast. Uh, something must be wrong with it. But when God does the thing, he doesn't take all day. So I believe God anointed his scientists. He anointed the doctors and provided that information so that we might. So he heard our cry. Another passage of scripture, scripture that says that the people of Israel was down in Egypt. And their cry came up before the Lord. And the Lord called Moses aside with the burning bush. And he told Moses, to, he gave Moses things to do and things to say. He told him to go down and talk to Pharaoh. And when Moses went down to Egypt, God used him. He worked through him. He spoke through him. He used Aaron because Moses said that he, he was not a learned man. And so... All God also hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He told Moses, he said he hardened his heart. So when God went, when Moses went down, 10 plagues fell upon the people. And every time a plague happened, Pharaoh said he would release the people and let them go. And at the end, Moses would go to the Lord and the Lord would take the plague away. And Pharaoh would change his mind because the Lord hardened his heart again. So after 10 plagues, the final plague, was a plague that will come upon the children and take the firstborn. So the children was affected by it. So again, Pharaoh allowed, said to Moses that I'll let the people go. But God gave Moses a cure. And some of you and some church folk, folks will argue with this. He said, take a sheep, take a goat, take it amongst from, from the herd, and take the blood and, 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 and smear it over the, the post. I imagine in this time, if God would have, would have told the scientists to, to take the blood from a goat, we would have had a problem with it. But no, God provided a vaccine. And many of us are fighting with God because God did not do this thing the way that we thought he would do it. So now we fight against it. We fight against it. We don't want to take it. We don't want to do this. But God heard our cry. And who am I or who are you to say how and tell God how he should provide a cure for it? So I am standing today and I'm speaking to the men of God. Those of you that have been called by God to lead the people of God. I advise you and I'm asking you to go back into your closet, to speak to the Lord. Do not cause your people to suffer. Do not cause your people to be divided, but speak the truth. I'm calling the men and women of God 
to stand against the governors and, 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 and all the politicians that are spreading lies throughout this land about this vaccine. God has called you. God has called you to protect your people. He has not called you or me to destroy the people that he's given us to govern over. So I say to you, do the right thing. Tell the truth about the virus. Put on your mask. Take your shots. Social distance. Trust God. Do not limit God. Work with God. Speak with God. And do what is right. I have three points that I would like to speak to you today. One is God has given us the power. Two, to believe is to be obedient to God's word. And three, the promise. In John 14, it says, the first verse, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. He didn't say not to cry. He didn't say not to mourn. He didn't say not to be concerned. But he said not to be troubled. That means he gave us the power. We have an option to be troubled or not. Because he said let not, that tells me that he gave me the power not to be consumed by this thing, but to believe in him. Oh yeah, he's never said that we would not have trouble. It says, we've been endured for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote, into each life, some rain must fall. Some days must be dark and dreary. Ella Fitzgerald sang a song, says, into each life, some rain must fall. But too much is falling in mine. Into each heart, some tears must fall. But some day when the sun will shine. I know what it's like to go through hardships. I know what it's like to bury a loved one. I know what it's like to stand by the gravesite and see your father lowered into the ground. I know what it's like to see your child lowered into the ground. I know what it's like to cry until your pillow is wet, to cry and no sound will come out. I know what it's like to bury a cousin or a friend. I know what it's like to lose a loved one to COVID. We have had to learn how to mourn differently. As soon as you bury one, you receive a call that another one has passed. I know what it's like to be left behind. I know what it's like to have your heart broken into pieces. I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to be lied on. Whatever it is that you're going, go ahead and cry. Go ahead and mourn. Go ahead and feel. It's okay to mourn. It's okay to wonder. It's okay to be a part of this, to be a part of the ones that are left here crying, the part of the ones that are burying people. It's part of the grieving process. So go ahead and cry. But don't let it take you out. Remember that God is in control. God will wrap you in his arm. I know. Word says, weeping may endure, but joy comes in the morning. And I don't know when your joy or when your morning is going to come, but I know it will come. I remember the days after my father passed that I, my heart was so broken. Every time I looked one way, another way, it seemed like I saw him, I could hear his voice, and my heart was broken into pieces. And day after day and year after year, it went on and on. I would see a, a, a child walk into the park with their father and something to me would just break. But one day, I don't know when it happened, but I know one day, joy came. My mourning came. I didn't mourn as much as I used to. Yes, I still miss him. Yes, I love him. And yes, I long to have a, a, having a conversation with him. But I thank God that my morning came because in that morning, my joy. So as you go through this process, as you miss your brother, as you miss your cousin, as you miss your child, your daughter, remember this, that weeping endure for a moment, but joy will come in the morning. After you cried and your morning has come, I want you to do this. I want you to get up. 
Wash your face. Take a bath like David did after he, his, he found out that the child had passed. And David was in sackcloth and ashes. But after word came that the Lord did not hear his cry and that he had taken a child, David got up, washed his face, took a bath, combed his hair. So I advise you to comb your hair, brush your teeth, put on some, some, some smell good, shake yourself, put your right foot in front of your left foot because and enjoy because your morning has come. My second point is believe. Obedience to the word of God brings prosperity and blessings. Disobedience brings failure and punishment. If you believe, you will obey and obey and hold on to God's promises. Part of our covenant agreement with God is that we trust and obey. Job 19 says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the end he will stand on the earth and after my skin has been destroyed, ye, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. Obedience, believe. I have not seen God in the flesh, but I believe that he exists. I believe that God is the only one that can take away the pains. I believe that God hung the stars, flung the moon. I believe all that. So we say, how can you believe? But I believe within my soul. Something in me tells me to hold on. Something in me tells me to keep praying, keep looking. There's so many things that have happened in my life that I can't explain. The only way I can say it, but God. God has always been there for me. God has always protected me from myself. God has always made a way out of no way. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is my all and all. I thank the Lord for just holding me. I thank the Lord for just keeping me. I thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. So many times when I couldn't find my way. So many times when I went my way. Thank you, Lord. God was always there. I remember one time I was driving down a highway and it was in a storm. And I um, shouldn't have been driving, but I was driving anyway. And the car hydroplane went over on the side of the road and starts going into oncoming traffic. And I could see the lights coming and all of a sudden the car swerved this way and rolled over the bank and turned upside down. And people were so concerned, they stopped, they ran over and they were beginning to beat on the car to pull people out. And I stood, I said, hey, don't, don't break the car, I'm already out. Somehow God had taken me out of that car, put me over to the side upright. I thank you, Lord. God is always there. He's always helping us. He's always protecting us. A young man, I grew up in the South when they were burning crosses in black people's lives. And I would walk down the highway and, and people would come up on me and God would always protect me from it. So I know God is real. I know he's real. I can feel it in my bones. You can't tell me this is what I feel inside of me. When I start to pray, I can feel his spirit move up inside of me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Something he says, something on the inside. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I didn't mean to go that way, but thank you, Lord. Point three. It says, point three here, it says the promises. The promise. In the word of God, it says, it says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. He didn't say I might come back. He didn't say I might prepare a place. He said I'll go to prepare a place. And he said I will come again. Not I might come again, but I will come again. He said I will never forsake you. So God, I have, we have a promise that God will take care of us. God, he went to prepare a place and he said I will come again. Not maybe, not might, but he will come again. So I just hold on to that promise. You know, watching the, the Summer Olympics, bless my soul. Uh, I believe that God prepared a sanctuary for the athletes. And what do I mean by that? He took the politicians out. He took the religious leaders out. He took the fans out of the stadium. And the athletes were the only one there. They were there where they could compete and cheer each other on. There were hugs for the competitors. They entered the, sta the stadium with gratitude and praise. I think we people of God can, 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 can learn something from that. 
They, if you watch the, the, the Olympics, you saw they, they entered that stadium, they were happy. They had praise. You know why they were so happy? Because it was a time that they didn't know if they were ever going to be able to compete again. But the fact that they were able to compete, they waited a whole year to be able to compete. It brought joy to the soul. It was so amazing that when you ask how they felt, the athletes would say, I'm grateful for the chance and blessed to be here. One athlete had a chance to take another jump and he had an opportunity to win a goal all by himself. But when he had a choice, he asked the, 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 the person over the event, he says, if I don't jump again, that means we both get a goal? And he said, yes. And so instead of him thinking about himself, he looked at the, his competitor and he says, we both get a goal. And it amazed me how they jumped into each other on people from different parts of the world. They jumped into each other's arm and they congratulated each other and they hugged and they smiled. And I got a glimpse of heaven because we're all happy. He didn't think about himself. He thought about his fellow man. And I just thank God for that, that just shared it with me. It brought tears to my eyes to see that. That's what love looks like for your fellow man and for your brother. Even though for the athletes, COVID was running throughout the countries, there was political unrest in their homes. What they had to go through to get out there, all the hard training and sacrifice, left loved ones at home, some on their sick beds, some had just lost loved ones, they had sorrows, but they did not let those things keep them from showing up and facing a new day. So I say to you again, let not your heart be troubled. If I had a voice and if I could sing, the one song that I would sing is called Hold On Just a Little While Longer. Hold on just a little while longer. And it says everything will be all right. Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer and everything will be all right. It says fight on just a little while longer. Fight on just a little while longer and everything will be all right. Sing on just a little while longer and sing on just a little while longer and everything will be all right. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, and I say to you all across this land, I say to you, uh, pastors, preachers, teachers, I ask that you hold on to your first love. Go back into your closet. Seek the Lord. Seek his face and get a direction and come back and tell the people. Thus said the Lord, speak truth to the politicians. So, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Do the right thing. You are elected to serve. If your heart has been hardened, turn to God. Just as Pharaoh's heart was hard. That's why DeSantis can look straight in the camera and, and make rules and say, Dr. Wear a mask, because God, his heart has been hardened. That's why uh, Ted Cruz and the rest of them can, can make the, the decisions that they make, is because their heart have been hardened. But because their hearts are hardened, I know that God is in this thing. I know that God has a plan for Ted Cruz, DeSantis, just like he has a plan for you and for me. If we just hold on to God's word and we be obedient to God's word, he's going to make this thing all right, brothers and sisters. He's going to work it out. He's going to make it all right. He's going to work it out. Hallelujah. He's going to make it all right. God wants to reach everyone in the world. How were all those people going to hear about God's love, about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? without a preacher. He said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can you preach unless you've been sent? So if you haven't been sent, go back and get permission from the Lord. How can they call on someone they don't know and have faith in? And how can they have faith in someone they haven't heard? And how can they hear, well, let me say this again, how can they hear without a preacher, not a politician, but a preacher. And how can they preach unless they've been sent? If you're not preaching what does said the Lord, you have not been sent. Let me say that again. If you're not preaching what does said the Lord, you have not been sent. If you're not serving the people and doing right 
by the people that God put you over. Woe unto you, said the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. To the rest of us, hold on. Keep praying. Keep singing. singing keep fighting. If you're struggling and you need someone to pray with you, or you need a place to worship, a place to call, a place to know God, we encourage you, I encourage you to call the numbers on the screen. Leave a message. Someone will get back to you as soon as we pick up the message. God is waiting. He loves you. And we here at New Hope want to help direct you and guide you to be in the body of Christ. We here at New Hope are still learning. We're still growing. But we know that God is real. We know that God is love. And we would love to be with you. We would love to walk with you through your journey to get to know Christ. And even if you're not looking for a church home, you just need someone to pray for you. Someone to just stand beside you. And I know, I know you're hurting. I know that things are going wrong in your life. And I know that you've lost loved one. And I know you need to hear from God. But you need someone in your life that knows God. Someone that can help you with this fight, with this walk. So we ask that you again, dial this number. Reach out and we'll reach out to you. God bless you. God keep you. Take the shot. Put on your mask, wash your hands, do your social distance so we can receive the promise because I know God has heard our cry and he has healed our land and he's helped us and gave us what we need to fight this disease, this plague. Thank you and God bless you. It is prayer time in New Hope. I would ask if it's safe for you to do so that you bow your heads, close your eyes, and open up your heart for this word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come to you as humbling as we know how, Lord, because you are God. You are still in control. Scripture says that they have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, that they could do all things through Christ who gave them strength. And Lord, we are living translations of that scripture, that we can do all things through you. You are still the God who was with us when we were in our mother's womb. You are the same God who walks with us, talks with us on a daily basis, and Lord, you told us you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so as we think about moving forward in this life, we realize, Lord, that you are the one who allows us to see sunshine on a cloudy day. You are the reason we can smile in a world where there is so much darkness. You, God, are the reason we can walk into hospitals and feel content. You are the reason that even when loved ones transition from labor to reward, that we can lift up our holy hands to you, Lord, because we know that you are still God and God in control. So God, we call on you at this time. Move with us, Lord. We call on you at this time. Be with us at this moment. We call on you at this time, Lord, because it is you who we truly need. As we think about the air pollution and opportunities for us not to be able to see your beauty, looking west and not being able to see the mountains, looking up and not being able to see the sky, Lord, we know that that's just a physical representation of what it can sometimes feel like when we don't look to you. When we allow the different situations in our lives to cloud our judgment of who you are and whose we are, Lord, but we are yours, you are God. And so, Lord, we will look our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing our help truly does come from you, Lord, even in moments when we can't see you clearly. We know that you are still with us, that you and your ride will never leave us. They will comfort us. And that is why we can walk through the valley of the shadows of death and fear no evil. And so, Lord, we ask that you be with us. Fill our cup with you. 
Be with us, Lord. Continue to allow us to face giants that we never knew that we had the ability to conquer. Be with us, Lord, so that we can go out into places and spaces in which others need to know that you are still God and be a representation of you. You are a good God. And so, Lord, we just take this moment right now simply to say thank you. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for all of the different things that you have done, some that we consciously are aware of, many that we are not. Lord, thank you for being God. Thank you for New Hope Baptist Church and the opportunities, Lord, that we have to be a church and a community, to transcend community. And now even through technology, Lord, to meet those even in their homes and be able to answer and let them know that you are still God and that you are hearing their prayers. Thank you, Lord, for being God. Lord, be with our pastor, the under shepherd of our flock, as he continues to guide and move this church in the direction that we should go. Thank you, Lord, for all of our staff who has been able to work during this pandemic. And thank you all for all of those who have become uh, find you a little bit more clearly, even in the darkness. For that, we offer this prayer in your most humble name we do pray. Let us all say, Ashe, and amen. God bless you, family. And with that said, I invite you to join with us as we receive the benediction today. As we do so, won't you take a moment to share a fellowship connection on the telephone line? For those who are on the phone line today, won't you give Reverend Jerry Oakshire just a moment to unmute those lines as you connect together, encourage each other's hearts in fellowship. And those on our stream, won't you take a moment to post a comment in the comment section to encourage someone's hearts to bear witness, even though virtually together today. As we look to God, to be dismissed, I welcome you to like this worship stream, to share it with a friend, to subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and to just enjoy the goodness of God in your life through the means that God has granted us. Won't you bow with me today? God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard that is of you. And God, we thank you for the precious privilege Oh God, of acting on our participation with you. We thank you, oh God, uh, for how you have, uh, you, you have granted us a privilege to go into the lands of loss. And we thank you, oh God, for the way in which you have uh, given us great names to represent the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So God, now as we're dismissed, we ask you to go with us into the week we've never seen before, though we know you hold the week in your hand. And as we go, God, we hold in our hearts the precious privilege, the commission from Christ our Savior to bear witness to the win you've given our lives. It's in Jesus' name we ask and pray and all God's people say together, amen and amen. God bless you, family. We'll see you again next week.